Now in this video, we'll talk about OSPO's gener generic TTL security check or TTL security mechanism. Now it is an additional security feature which is to be added apart from MD5 authentications. Like if you just get back, we have seen some of the basic authentication methods. We can either use MD5 or we can use some clear text authentications where the, we call them as routing protocol authentication. We can configure some password. If the password matches on both the sites, then only they will form the neighborship. Now, apart from that, if you want some additional security, we can, we can also go with some TTL security check mechanism. Now in this, what we can do is we can define the exact number of hops these two neighbors are. Like by default, the neighbors will be one hop away. We can define the number of hops. And if that particular hop matches, then only they will form the neighborship. So whenever a OSPF receives any message, if you implement this feature, it is going to compare the TTL IP header with the TTL value, whatever is configured for that particular neighbor. Now it's something additional security added, which is going to define how many hops this neighbor is away. And if that matches in the header, then then only the authentic, then only the neighborship will come up or else it will not come up. It's an additional security mechanism which is going to define the number of hops and that hops has to match the particular uh, TTL value in the IP header. And to enable this feature, we can simply go to the router, router OSPF1. We need to say TTL security on all the interfaces. Now we can simply go to all the interfaces and enable under the router mode, which means it is going to apply for each and every interface, which means if, if, if the other side also has to be configured again, if the other side is also configured, and if it matches the hops on both the sites as per the TTL value in the IP header, then only the neighborship will come up. We can either enable for all the interfaces or we can go to specific interface. We can enable only for that particular interface. So let's try to practically verify this uh, behavior here. Now in my scenario, again, I got a OSP of pre-configured here, where the router one, router two, router three, router four are already pre-configured with the IP addresses, whatever you can see in the diagram. So if I give show IP route OSP of, we can see all the routes are coming. And if you want to verify the neighborship, we can verify on the router one, we have router two and router four are the neighbors. Similar way, if I go and check on the router three, show IP OSP of neighbors, you can see the neighborship is up. Now let's go to router, let's go to router and enable some TTL security on the routers. So I'll go to router one and I'll say, I'll add a command, router OSP of one. And then to enable TTL security, we just need to say TTL security on all the interfaces. So we just enable on all the interfaces. Now to so enable on all the interfaces. Now, if you verify the neighborship, I can see the timers are going just below. And if you verify the same thing on the router two, uh, actually the timers has to expire. Now it's slowly expiring because the default date time is 40 seconds. If you, if you don't want to wait, we can simply give show IP OSP, clear IP OSP process. It's going to reset the neighbors. And you can see once we do this, if you verify the neighborship on the router one and router two, you, can, you don't see the neighbors here. And if you want to verify on the router two also, the neighborship is stuck in initialized stage. It's not going beyond. If you want to verify, we can also enable some of the debug commands, debug IP OSP of adjacencies. Now we should see some messages here. Let's do it on the router one as well. Debug IP OSP of adjacencies. So I'm going to clear the process. Now I can see the interface is going up. You can see the drop the packet from the neighbor 4.4.4.1 and the TTL value is one. And the default TTL value which is received from this neighbor is one. And right now the opposite side, it is not configured. Now I didn't configure on the router two and the router four. That's the reason the neighborship is not coming up, but it's still verifying the, verifying the neighbors. You can see it's still verifying the TTL value here. And it's going to drop the packet from that neighbor because there is no TTL security configured over there. So let's go to, let's go and configure on all the routers, router OSP of one. I'm going to say TTL security on all the interfaces. Let me copy paste the same commands on all the routers. Let's go to router three as well. Once we configure this, we should see the neighborship back to normal stage because we have configured the neighborship and the default TTL value is one. 
so it's going to work you can see here now if I go and verify on the router 1 show IP OSP of neighbor you can see the neighborship is up on the router 2 or the router 3 if I verify show IP OSP of neighbor you can see the neighborship is still up here now we can either enable this detail security globally under the router mode for all the interfaces or we can also enable on a specific interfaces like if you want to enable on that specific interface let's 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 see let's go to router 4 and on the router 4 what i'll do is i'll remove the detail security in the global configuration mode that is on router mode and then i'll try to enable this feature only on the interfaces specifically like on the router 3 and the route, router 4 on both the interfaces so we can simply go to the interface you can say ttl uh, IP OSPF TTL security IP OSPF TTL security and we can add TTL security here and we can also define the hops here right now we just go with the normal one hop the default is one and the same command I'm going to add on s1 by one IP OSPF TTL security so let me check whether did I configure the correct commands on the correct interfaces or not. You can see now it is on the correct interfaces. Now I should see the neighborship has to come up automatically. Now we can go and specifically disable TTL security on one interface. Let's say on the router 2, I have enabled it globally on the router mode, which means TTL security is applied on this interface as well as this interface. That is on S1 by 0 and S1 by 1. So my requirement here is like I may want uh, this interface these two interfaces should not uh, run TTL security but whereas it is enabled globally but I don't want it to run on these two interfaces now we can simply go to that particular interface like in my scenario on um, the router router 2 the interface is s1 by 1 I can simply say IP OSP of TTL security and then I can simply disable it now I'm going to disable on the router 2 S1 by 1 and the same thing I'm going to do on the router 3 S1 by 0 interface. That's S1 by 0 interface here. I, IP OSP of TTL security disable. Now we can also disable on specific interfaces as well. Now I should see the neighborship has to come up between the router 2 and router 3. Let me clear the process for verification. Now on the router 3, I should see two neighbors. Now you can see the router 3 is forming the neighborship with router 2 as well. Now this is something additional feature we can add, but you need to really watch out for this feature, especially in the troubleshooting section. In case if you realize that there is some TTL security commands or configured on the router mode or on the interface mode, and probably that will affect your neighborship as well. It's something not really mandatory to do it, but if you want to add some additional security where you can define the number of hops and if the hops is also not correct in that case also they will not form the neighborship.